this is the lecture for lead, lead compensator design. So in this compensator design, there are a few steps. The first we need to design the lead compensator first to improve the transient response. The next is the evaluation process of the improvement in steady state error. And the last one is the procedure for lead design part. So the design procedure is based on these steps. The first one is for the transient response characteristic. The first one is to evaluate the performance of uncompensated system to determine how much improvement in transient response is required. The next one, we design the lead compensator to meet the transient response specifications. Next part is to evaluate the steady state error for the lead compensated system to determine how much more improvement in steady state error is required. And the last part is to design the lead compensator to yield the required steady state error. For this question, we need to design lead lead compensator for the system so that the system will operate with 20% overshoot and a two-fold reduction in setting time. Further, the compensated system will exhibit a tenfold improvement in steady state error for a RAM input. RAM input shows that this is type 1 system. So the first step is to evaluate the performance of the uncompensated system to determine how much improvement in transient response is required. Given 20% overshoot, so you can determine the value of damping ratio zeta 0.456. By using the value of gain 192.1, we determine uh, the dominant pole with this value minus 1.794 plus G3.501. Using this value of damping ratio, we also can determine theta d using this formula. So this is the dominant pole of the uncompensated system. The next part is find the compensated system dominant pole, BPU, design lead compensator, evaluate the improvement in steady state error, and design the lead compensator. So this is the dominant pole from the uncompensated system. Based on this one, we determine the setting time equal to 4 divided by sigma d, which is this value, and based on the design requirement, Two-fold reduction in the settling time. So we divide the old settling time by 2. So this is the new settling time. And using this formula, we can determine the new sigma d. Based on the theta d that calculated from the damping ratio, we can determine new omega d. So based on this new omega d and new, new omega d and new sigma d, we can determine the new dominant pole of this system based on the design requirement two-fold reduction in settling time. The next step is design the lead compensator to meet the transient response specifications. The design includes the zero location, pole location, and the loop gate. So based on the DP new location, we uh, translate into pole and zero map, including we locate the real poles zero, negative six, and negative ten from the original uncompensated transfer function. And then we need to determine theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 and also include the zero location and pole location in this pole and zero map. By doing this one, including the zero location and pole location, we use this formula, the summation of theta 0 minus the summation of theta pole equal to 180 in this calculation. Theta Zc and theta Pc represent the zero location and pole location for this lead compensator. So using this equation, we can determine the theta Zc minus theta Pc or represent by this symbol phi is equal to 55.96. Based on the damping ratio value, we can also determine the value of theta which is 117.12 which is equal to alpha. To determine the theta Pc and theta Zc, we use this equation. Alpha divided by 2 minus phi divided by 2 is equal to the angle of theta pc while theta zc is alpha divided by 2 plus phi divided by 2 is equal to the angle of 
theta z c. So based on this, based on these two values of theta p c and theta z c, we can determine the location of p c and z c for lead compensator using this formula. So this is the transfer function for lead compensator, and we combine with the uncompensated transfer function. So this is the lead compensated open loop transfer function. So after this part. Uh, using the MATLAB, we can simulate the system to be sure all requirements have been met and redesign if the simulation shows that requirements have not been met. The next step is evaluate the steady state error performance for the lead compensated system to determine how much more improvement in steady error steady state error is required. So this is based on from uh, this is based on the uncompensated system. We need to determine the steady state error. So from uh, using the value of gain k. 192.1, we use the open loop transfer function and we determine the uncompensated velocity static error constant, 3.2. Based on this KAV, we determine steady state error for the uncompensated system, which is this one. Based on the requirement for the design, 10 full improvement in steady state error, so we divide the uncompensated steady state error by 10. So this is the new steady state error. And from this one, we can determine the new velocity static error constant, 32. So back to the lead compensated transfer function, this one. Okay. From this one, we need to define KKC using DP new value. Okay. How to do it? Okay. This is the, um, we rearrange the Compensated lead compensated open loop transfer function to determine KKC, where the denominator of this one become numerator, and numerator of this one we put at denominator, replace S with a DP new value, and then uh, the answer in complex uh, number format you convert into magnitude and phase. That magnitude will be the value of gain KKC using the calculator. I got 1094, but you can use 1090 answer as in textbook. So based on this one, we put back the value of KKC into this transfer function and we determine the KV. In this case, KVO. Okay. So plug in the value of KKC. So we determine the KVO which is equal to 4.72. And based on this one, we determine the old steady state error which is 0.212. Okay, this is the simulation from MATLAB. This is the root locus based on uh, using the DP, new DP, and also gain KKC 1090. The next part is design the lead compensator to use the required steady state error. In this case, we assume PC that is near to origin, so we choose minus 0.01. So for lead compensator as usual, we use this formula. So we use the KV new 32 after we consider tenfold improvement in steady state error. Divide by KVO. This one. And then this is the selected PEC for lead compensator to determine ZC. So by doing that, we can determine our lead lead compensator open loop transfer function where this is your KKC. This is the ZC from lead compensator. This is the ZC from lead compensator. This is the PC from lead compensator. This is the PC from lead compensator and this is the original real pulse from the open loop transfer function. So the next one, we simulate the system to be sure all requirements have been met and redesign if the simulation shows that requirements have not been met. So this is the uncompensated system, the black one, the black response, and the green one is the lead and lead lead compensated system. This is to show that by implementing lead let lead compensator it improves in terms of transient response which is peak time and also settling time for this one to show the improvement uh, based on the RAM input for system type 1 in terms of steady state error
So that's all for design lead compensator. Thank you.